this perfect awesome okay so sec funds we're gonna have fun for the next two days today and tomorrow uh doing sec funds and uh, sec funds has quite a bit of calculations but it's basically all about investment and savings okay so when you have that at the back of your mind going into this class then you're going to see that everything every conversation is going to revolve around investment it's going to revolve around savings and the principles around them okay and it's important to, for us as advisors to have the basic understanding okay before focusing on safe funds and annuities just basic understanding of this concept you know what is what is investing you know and and me i love looking at some of these things from the aspect of a layman person what is investing you see um kenny can you want to tell us what is investing hmm? um layman's language okay investment is um, yeah is um is you putting aside some money and you know putting it into mm -hmm. a, a, something that would help the money to grow yeah so there are different um types of investment different things that you can invest in you know like you know stocks and all that mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly so. that is it there's nothing much outside it again investing is okay i put money aside you know and with an expectations of some sort of growth and returns correct see because when you are investing yeah. in something you are not investing because you are expecting to lose you are expecting because you, you invest with an expectation that your investment is going to grow right yeah and sometimes that growth is a guaranteed component and sometimes it is not it be, sometimes it's a function of different uh dynamics that is outside your control like inflations interest rates and stuff like that however there are some investments that are guaranteed right in which some or all the principles are guaranteed you know to be paid to the investor right and some investors are not guaranteed so you can lose, you can even lose your whole money or you can win and even get more interest on it. So with that basic understanding of what investing is now, going into this course now, you are going to see how this thing we've talked about in a very simple and layman terms is going to play out through different scenarios, okay? We have an example here. Say Jean is a 78 year old and relies on the returns from her investments. Remember, I've talked about investment, the fact that we expect it to grow, right? So this lady, Gina, is relying on that investment. And why are people investing? People are investing, expecting that money to grow so that tomorrow they'll have something to fall back on, okay? From her investments to generate income to support her in retirement. Her investment combined with her pensions allow her to live comfortably. Jane feels that she cannot afford to risk her invested money in an investment that will not pay both her principal plus the stated returns. Therefore, Jane chooses guaranteed investment to ensure that she will not experience losses. You see? So when it comes to investment, there are different kinds of people. There are people that because of their future or what they have at stake, they know right from the get go that look, I'm putting this money because I want a returns. So I don't want to lose any money from my capital. And I want to have a guarantee, like an assurance of what growth I will be getting. So this kind of people, we look at them as conservative investors. And this kind of people, you have to understand the different investment options out there so you can put their money in the right place where, one, they will not lose money, and then, two, 
the return on their investment will be guaranteed. That way they can plan their lives based on those returns. Does that make sense? Now that's what we call investment basis. Some investment fundamentals are essential to understand how investment works and how returns work. Again, it's, it's uh, too much grammar here, but what it does is like understand, okay, you need to know what is principle that you'll be earning in one year. What are the principles? What are the returns on this investment? And also the fact that investment returns are compounded, right? So if I invest 1,000, let's say this year, okay, and it's into an investment that gives me 10%. So it means that at the end of 2021, right, my money will be 1,100, correct? So going into 2022, my capital, my initial capital is not going to be 1,000, it's going to be 1,100. So that's the power of compounding, okay? All right, so this one is based on an assumption that this investment gives 10% returns per annum. But there are investment that most investment, even though they give certain percentage per annum, that interest is being distributed over the course of the months, which means the returns are re being received on a monthly basis, okay? So, now, when you are compounding it, so we have formula to do all these calculations on investment returns. See, all investment have one of three types of returns, okay? Uh, investment returns can be positive, okay, and generate profits, or returns can be neutral where an investment receives the original principal, but there's no returns. However, the third one is where the returns can be negative, that is, where the investor loses money on the investment. So yeah, investment can go in three different directions. It can go in the upward directions whereby, you know, you make money. But it can go on a, a neutral direction whereby you didn't lose, you didn't gain. And it can go south whereby you lose money, okay? And we have an example here for that. Say Salim invests 10,000, but receives 11,000 when he sells the investment. The 1,000 profit is as a result of his 11,000 returns, less 10,000, which is a return of 10%. Okay? So that is that one. Again, some of you might be wondering, oh, what's, what, where is Joyce reading from? What way I'm reading for is more like a summary, a summarized textbook. Because when you look at the textbook, you know, on a remake or whatever, it's one big textbook like this. You know, I just want to focus on the core principle so that, you know, who has time to read that bulky stuff? When you listen to this one, you are as good as good to go. Okay. And as we are running through this, um, there are some things that if I feel is not relevant, I'm not going to spend so much time on it. And feel free to stop me to ask any question that you might have at any time, okay? Um, on the plus side, speculative investment can generate high returns and significant profits than low risk investment. That's very true, okay? Um, you know, um, some <laughs> good investment, you know, that returns very well as their, their returns can be so juicy and sweet, so the losses can be as well. And that's why when they are doing very well, they return very much returns compared to low risk investment, okay? And uh, returns are classified nominal or real. A nominal return is a named or stated rate of returns before considering inflation, all right? So the calculations for that will be nominal returns less inflation which is real returns. In other words, you're looking at your nominal returns is, that is your returns before inflation. So if you want to know your real returns will be like re inflation in Canada now is estimated to be 2.4%, right? So if your investment return 5% for you, okay? So you will have to take that 5% less 
your 2.4 Taraba down uh 2.6 percent as your real returns okay and that's why i tell people that if your money is sitting down in the bank you are losing money because of inflation okay um the next one here we have here is asset classes uh investment can have similar characteristics because uh, characteristics and be governed by similar laws and regulations they are assigned to asset classes based on their similarities. Asset classes falls into three main categories. We have stocks, which is also called equities, bonds, which is also called fixed income or debt, mm -hmm. cash, which is also called market instruments. So you're going to see um, questions around, oh, the following are, uh, um, asset classifications except so they are going to give you stocks which is equity bonds which is fixed income and then cash which is more like market instrument and then they'll throw in one thing there for you to find the wrong answer so we're going when we start solving question now we, we, you're going to see that we were going to be coming across us like this okay two other classes are often added to the three main classes of assets, such as real estate, and each asset classes has its own risk or returns, right? Uh, sometimes um, real estate is added as asset classes as well, okay? Um, diversification makes assets from the different assets. Well, the rule of thumb is that it's always recommended to diversify investments into all these fixed uh, assets. That way you can distribute your risk across the different um, asset classes. Again, don't forget the asset classes. We have the stocks, the bonds, the money market, which is money instrument, which is the um, uh, um, cash and then uh, real estate. Okay, um, moving forward, still on diversifications. Diversification is a strategy to manage risk, right? Diversification is when you implement a strategy to manage your risk by, you know, distributing your investment into all these different asset classes. Maybe you might decide to put some in um, stocks, which is equity. You can decide to put some in bonds, okay? And even in, inside each of these asset classes, there are also a, a ranking system of risk as well. For instance, when you come to bond, uh, the federal government, like the Canadian government bond, is believed to be the most secured bond compared to uh, private companies' bonds, right? So those are the things. And then when you even get into uh, like stocks, now, inside stocks, they are riskier and they are middle-class risk <laughs> stocks or, you, you know, like that too, right? Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is to have an understanding of these um, classifications, you know, of assets. And of course, when we look at real estate and all these classifications of assets have their own... Um, uh, advantages and disadvantages, right? You know, as much as it is that stocks can be volatile, like it can swing in, you know, opposite pendulum within a sweep like this, but it's very, very liquid, right? Same thing as money market, but bonds, um, bond is not as liquid, but it's very secure, right? So those are the things, and of course, um, Real estate is not liquid at all. Okay, so if you see, um, excuse me, any questions around of the following asset classifications, um, which one is the least liquid or something like that, just know it's real estate, okay? So we talked about diversifications and then uh, I just um, talked on liquidity right now, um, let's see. Okay, so let me see what. Yeah, diversifications. 
uh, strategies and the economic conditions can vary from country to country as well. And then uh, segregated funds are a good fit for diversified investment. Yes, and that is why, like we used to do stocks a lot, my husband and I, we used to do stocks a lot. But now, um, as we get grow older, <laughs> we lean more into segregated funds because segregated funds is um, a vehicle that allows ones to diversify your investment, your risk easily, okay? Yeah, and then the mutual funds and exchange traded funds, okay? Share similar diversification characteristics as segregated funds. Since most investors like the capital to self-diversify their holdings, investing in a fund type investment helps them to achieve the benefit from adequate diversification, okay? I thought it would be nice to come and read that section so we all get it. All right, in terms of um, liquidity, investment can be turned either liquid or illiquid, right? And liquidity describes the ability to cash in on your investment uh, very quickly, very easily, like turn around for um, cashing in on your investment is very, very fast. And that you can use, do that with, um, with sec funds, you can do that with, uh, um, which of that things with stocks, right? You can do all that, but with with bonds, bond is not as liquid as sec funds and uh, this thing, and the one that is not even as liquid at all is uh, real estate. Okay, but of all these things we'll be talking about regarding investments and all that time value of money comes to play in everything that we do. For instance, what is time value of money? So now I want to leave the floor open again. Any of us can do that. And please talk to us. What is time value of money? Unmute yourself and share. Abi Demi, you wanna go? What's time value of money, guys? Time value Are of money? Are we sleeping? Yes. Um, how do I put this now? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to... Okay, um... Is is what you have now? Mm -hmm. Basically, is uh, comparing what you have now with what you are going to have in the future, kind of a thing. Okay. Yeah. And then, right. actually, I think your potential, any capacity in the nearest years to come, kind of like that. Okay, good. That's what I good, can so. figure out though. No, I, I like that. You know, let's keep it simple because the reason why I'm asking all this simple, simple thing is so that because all these things we do it every day, right? Oh, you go to which example should I use? Uh, mm. I'm looking for the perfect example. Hmm. Huh. How about investment kind of a thing? No, I want to use the example of what we do on a daily basis, right? Our interaction with money, because we do this thing regularly, right? Yeah, that's- oh. Yes, yes, yes. I, I have a perfect example now. You know, like, you, you know, these flyers, they drop in the house for us, right? On the, this thing, if you're a Costco member, Costco send its members their flyers, right? Yes. It's, it's like a booklet like this. And then um, when you see that flyer, 
sometimes when I see it, even when I have needs to buy something and I see that that thing is coming on sale because when Coco, Costco send it out, sometimes the, the sales will start until maybe in the next two weeks, maybe next month that the sales will start, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's say I want to buy vacuum and that vacuum as of today, eh? Today vacuum, this vacuum is 350, okay? Yeah. Now, if I wait, this, this 350 now is the present value of this of, of this uh, of this vacuum right mm -hmm. but if i wait for two weeks and costco is selling it how many let's say costco is is doing it uh let's say 60 dollars so now after two weeks the future value of this is now 290. so this is the time value right now let me revise it again. Let's say this same vacuum now present value could be 290 and future value could be 350. Right? It means that the, the value of my 290 in two weeks' time is 350. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Do you guys? Yeah. Kenny, Abidemi, are we there? So now, if we understand this very simple this thing now, that I have a, 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 a vacuum that I could have bought for 290 today, present value. And then I didn't see the flyer on time. Right? Yes. Maybe by the time I see it tomorrow, it's already gone. It's expired. It's finished. I have to pay three fifty for it. So that is time value of money. The time value of money is the worth of your money, either in future or in today. What is the power of that money you are holding today? And what would that money, the purchasing power of that money tomorrow? Right? If I made it to Costco and the sale have started, the purchasing power of my 290 today will enable me to buy the vacuum. But if I get there and the sales is over, then the purchasing power of my 290 will not be able to get me the vacuum. Right? Makes sense? Okay, I <laughs> muted ourselves. Please, you guys, we are muting yourself so that we respond in that way, you know. Yeah, so you, look at it. Uh -huh. Okay, look here. Uh, let me see. Let me Sorry, I got a message and I'm trying to wonder. Okay. So now, with that simple knowledge, with that simple understanding, the principle of time value of money is described in two ways. The present value of money and the future value of money. So this example I give now is the perfect example of your present value of money and your future value of money, okay? Invested money has the potential to increase in value over time due to interest and, right? So let's say now I went to Costco with the mind of buying this vacuum, 290, right? And I got there, the sale is over. And I just have 290. And I needed this vacuum, and I have no other means of coming up with 350. Let's say, as I was wondering what to do, Kenny came to me and said, Ah, what's the matter? I said, I have 290, but I was told the sales ends yesterday. I don't know what to do. And then Kenny said, Oh, I can help you. I have 
have a place I'll take you. You put this your two ninety. Hmm? Then they will be able to give you um what is ten percent of two ninety? Is two dollars and ninety cents? You don't even give me. <laughs> How many percent do I need to make to be able to get uh, sixty dollars on my two ninety? Hmm? What's the question again, please? Yes. Oh, okay. What I'm trying to explain is that, so let's say when I get to Costco to buy this vacuum, let's say this vacuum is two ninety, right? Mm -hmm. And I had only two ninety, and I went to Costco, and when I got to Costco, they told me, "Oh, sorry, our sales is over." And I don't have any other money, right? Mm -hmm. And while I'm there thinking of what to do, Kenny came to me and said, hey, Joy, what is going on? I said, well, I came to buy this vacuum and I only have this 290. And they told me it's no longer 290. I don't know what else to do. Kenny now say, oh, okay, never mind. I'll take you to, I'll introduce you to my company. They'll be able to give you 20% on this year 290 such that at the end of the month, you can make this 20% and add it to your, your 290 to be able to afford the vacuum at 350. So what is 20% on this, my 290? $58, is it not? It's $58. So you can see that $58 will still not get me to 350. So what do I do? So I might need to invest it maybe for another month to be able to make enough money to buy the vacuum, right? Yes. So this is what we call, in that case, in that moment, on that day, based on this investment, okay, let's even say, can you took me to a place they are giving me 25%. By that alone, my 290 times 0.25 will give me 72, right? So in that case, the future value of my 290 in a month's time will be how much? 362. This is, this is good stuff, guys. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the analogy? Yeah. If you understand it like this, any calculations that they bring in, in future value, present value, look, use the same whatever and knock it out. Boom. See, because that value of money deals with two directions, future yeah. value or present value. And what I just explained here is what future value of your money. And I'm going to use this same example again. Now pay very close attention, okay? Pay close, close attention. You see, this, this one is, 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 is direct. You know, this is not in any book. You know, it's not in any textbook, okay? This one, I have the, the rights to this explanation, to this example right now. <laughs> okay, so... I, me, Joy, I went to Costco. I have 290. And I want to buy vacuum. But getting to Costco, I realized that this vacuum that I thought was on sale is no longer in, on sales. Apparently, the sales was over. So I was so disappointed and I was wondering, okay, what am I going to do now? And as I was contemplating on what to do, I ran into a friend of mine who is a financial advisor. And she said, hey, Joy, good to see you after all the whatever. And I said, and I explained my dilemma, like, look, I came all the way, imagine, I came all the way to buy a vacuum. I saw the flyer, I was excited, I didn't even look at the date. Only to get here and I was told that uh, the sales is over. The present value of my money 
is two ninety. Okay. So this my close friend now I say, oh, don't worry. Okay. How about we put this your two ninety in an investment that will give you twenty five percent per month. No investment give you twenty five percent per month. But for the sake of example, is what I say. So don't come and say just say twenty five percent per month, right? So how about put? I can help you put your two ninety in a, an investment that will give you twenty five percent per month, so that by next month you'll be good to buy your vacuum. I say really? I say yes. So right there and then, ah, I did a quick mental calculation. Say ah, ah, if my two ninety will give me twenty five percent, so it means by next month. My money will be three sixty two. Yeah, I can buy my vacuum now. So that three sixty two point five has now become the future value of my two ninety. So my pres the present value of my two ninety, factoring in the growth of two point twenty five percent, have delivered to me the future value of my money, which is now three sixty. Okay, so that's simple term of uh, this thing. And then in calculating present value, there's a formula for calculating present value, okay? So here is a formula. Please, this class, we'll need our book, pen and paper, okay? We'll be needing pen and paper to solve this class. Um, so present value, which is our PV, Remember, this is your present value is your 290. Kenny, are you there? Sir Kenny? Kenny, yes. So, present yeah, value is your. I'm here. Sorry, I woke up since three. So oh, okay. I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because no one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, this present value, right? But you, you are understanding what I'm explaining, right? Yes, I am. Okay, good. If you have any questions, just uh, let me know. So now this present, the, the formula for present value is what is my future value? Remember my future value, right? I will divide it into one plus interest rate raised to power N. Okay, so now I'm thinking in my head how to explain that my example with this formula. Okay. Um, okay, so that is number of years. So uh, N is the number of years, right? Number of years. So now my present value is 290 based on that our example, which is now my future value. So the way this calculation is telling us now, you are calculating this future value because you don't know what that future value is going to be, right? The reason why we, I was saying that, oh, my future value will be 362 because I just did 25% a, a of that. But in this case now, we don't know. So we're going to take present value will now be future value divided by, right? Future value divided by what? One plus interest rate. Interest rate raised to power N. Interest rates, let's say, if your interest rate is 5% or whatever it is, you give 5%, 0.05 raised to power n. All right. Um, let me write this out nicely and show you guys. Don't forget to put it this way, which will be your future value divided by uh, one plus rate, which is, let's say 0 0.05 raised to power. N or one year or two years, 
always, always write out the formula like this. Do you see that? You guys see that? Okay. I'm recording the class, so I'm going to send it to everybody. Okay. Now, look at this example. Julie wants to know how much is needed today to pay 5000 in five years, given the current interest rate of 3%. The present value of 5000 in five years based on 3%. So now Julie wants to know how much is needed today, okay, to provide 5,000 in five years. So again, the way to also look at this is that now we know the future value, but we don't know the present value, right? For instance, um, In this instance now, still using that my, my vacuum example, let's say I know that, okay, the vacuum in two weeks time, uh -huh, in two weeks time is going to be 350, right? And then how, I, I'm looking to know how much is it today because Costco factor in a, a growth of 3% to arrive at that 350 in two weeks time. What would the vacuum be today? So based on these examples that we have here now, our future value, sorry, our present value will be calculated as future value, which is 5,000, okay, divide by, in brackets, Oh my God. Deep boy, what, what, what is this now? Deep day. Deep day. Come here. Get right and come and clean this water. And then off that TV and you guys go upstairs, please. Sorry about that, guys. So I'm going to take my 5,000 divided by one plus, what is the interest rate? The interest rate is 3%, which is 0 0.03. Raised to power in how many years? Five in years. five years. Okay, so it's going to be raised to power five. So my present value will be equal to 5,000 divided by one plus So one plus zero point three, one point plus <laughs> point three raised to power five. Okay. So I'm going to do this. One plus at this my calculator doesn't have raised to power here. Let's see, calculator. Okay, this one does one. Uh, can you guys see the, my calculator? So I have, um, so one plus 0 0.03. Is equal to 1.03. So that'll be 5,000 divided by um, 1.03 raised to power five. So how do I do? Okay, so it will be this, right? No, this is X squared. 
which which function do I use for raise to power function? You don't have that function in your laptop. You don't have it. You have to use a oh. I have to use a financial calculator. Yes. Yes. Oh oh. And I even check on my phone. I, I I see that I don't have that function too on the phone. Yeah, it's, it's financial calculator that has the other functionality. Ah, uh, how do we do this one now? Okay. Because so, how, uh, how raise, do you want to raise to power raise then? To power is multiplying what you have there by itself. So for example, if you have two raised to power four, you are mm -hmm. saying that's two times two times two times two. Yeah, but in the exam, are we going to be doing that or tautology? Because no, like this one the, now, the calculator have... is there now. We... Okay, I... okay, I have calculator. Now, how do I use yes, it? Yes, on this. No, in the exam, there's calculator on the screen. Why well, didn't I don't know whether it's a financial calculator. No, they won't give you financial calculator in the exam. There will, nobody will give you, except CFA, that they have their own calculator that be like machine. <laughs> okay, do, do you guys have any phone. Android phone? Do you guys have Android phone? Because Android has a race to power, but Apple does not. For instance, no, now I, no. Uh, if Android, it depends. It depends on the calculator you download. Now, it depends, it would not be a function of calculator you download. No, you understand one, what I mean. One is the one that came with. For instance, which? Let me see the calculator you have. Um. Let's see. Do you have anything okay, let, like let me... X Y? For your calculator? No, I don't have any X, Y on my calculator, but the one I pulled on the computer now has it now. Calculator. Okay. Let me see. Because I. Uh, see. Your screen. Is it X, Y? See. Can you see it? No. What I'm saying is, your, is the Word document. That's all I'm saying. Okay, um, I need to stop sharing. Can you see it now? Okay. Where's your so, X Y? I have X wrist X. This one is X squared now, right? Mm, that's X squared. There's no raised to power here. I don't think so. You see this uh, reverse that is on beside standard towards your right hand side. This one? No, no, the other one. This one? No, no, no. Towards your right. Go towards your right. This one? Yeah, yeah. do that. Click on it. Let's see. Okay. No, there's you... no history yet. Click. How about here? Uh -huh. Standard scientific. scientific. Yeah, click on it. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. There we go. So now you okay. want to seven x. Okay, so so I do. So we now need to find five thousand divided by one point zero zero. Is it zero five? No, no, no. Zero three. One point zero three raised to power five. So how do I do that? So I'll now do one point zero three, right? Mm -hmm. X, Where Y. Is Where is X, Y? This one? Yeah. Okay, raised to power five, right? Yes. Okay, then equal. That's okay. right. Okay, so my this will now be 5,000 divided by 1.1593. Okay, right? Yes. So I have to cancel this. Where do I cancel? Should be this now, right? Please. Now, eh? 
Okay, you've cancelled already. Yeah, guys. Nice. Yeah, I've cancelled. So I'll now take my 5,000, divide by 1.1.1593. Equal 4,000. 4,000. Three hundred and twelve thousand nine forty seven, nine forty seven. I believe that's what the, the answer they got here too. See, see, four thousand three one three. They they round it up, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I want to point out is this: like when you take that, remember now, your present value. Like what is what is um, what is my the time value of my money today, right? What is the time value? In other words, you are looking at what you are holding today. What can that money buy for you in future, right? Now, there are instances where you know your present value. When you are giving your present value then you'll be looking for future value. But when you are given your future value, then you are looking for present value. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Come again to that example of vacuum cleaner. When you know that in a month's time, right? When they give you that in a month's time, Costco be selling this vacuum 350. However, you don't know <coughs> how much that vacuum is being sold today. <coughs> that means you are looking for your present value today, which is what we just look for now. And in getting time value, the formula for present value is your future value. You divide it by one plus the rate raised to power of the number of years. <coughs> I'll say that again. Your present value is equal to your future value. You divide it by your uh, one plus rate, raised to power number of years, okay? Um, let me stop this one now. Excuse me. I need to move on to it. Now, so that one we calculated was um, present value. Did they give us the same thing for? Okay, so here now, this time around, we will be calculating a, a future value, right? So what's the formula for future value? What's the formula for? Did they give us future value formula here? Mm. Okay, yeah, here's if our formula for future value. Very similar to present value, okay? So our future value is equal to present value multiplied by, remember the difference here now is the multiplication. Okay, when we are finding future value, we are multiplying. When we are looking for present value, we are dividing. Okay? So we multiply it by um, one plus interest rate raised to power n. Okay? 
Now, don't forget to put your one plus interest rate in a black bracket because you need to find that one plus interest rate raised to power n first before you multiply it by uh, whatever the value of present value is. Okay, and um, I would like you to see it this way also in terms of the formula. For instance, um, you're finding your present value now, right? You don't know how much you need today. Hmm? So you divide whatever you have in future, you have to divide it to get to what it will be today because they've already told you that based on the return on investment. So it means that uh, if they are telling you that in 10 years time, your money will be worth 10,000, definitely it means that whatever you will have today will be less than that 10,000. So you need to divide to arrive at what you would be having today. Make sense? <laughs> Bless me. Bless you. Do you understand? So when you are finding present value, know that you are dividing it because you are moving from up, future, you understand, to the present. Then when you are in the present, going into the future, you need to multiply to get to the future. Make sense? Mm -hmm. You see that all these principles we are talking about, there are things we deal with on a daily basis. You understand? There are things we deal with on a daily basis. So when you see formula like this, don't look at it as if it's a, a one hell of a big deal, no. Okay, so now with this formula now, use the same example as the first one you will see that your future value will become your future. If they didn't give us a, a, a different example, yes, yeah, so that we follow it and know when we arrive at uh, this thing. Um, okay, yeah, there's an example here. Okay, Ted wants to know how much is needed today to provide 6,000, which is future value in five years, where the interest rate is annual. The interest rate is 5% in the example. Okay, so Ted wants to know how much is needed today to provide 6,000 in five years, right? So his future value, his future value is 6,000, right? Yeah. Mm -mm. No, Ted wants to know how much is needed today to provide 6,000, which is 6,000 is future value, right? And then so, oh, this one is still present value. In this one, we are still looking for present value. Okay, that one is basically, do we understand? Am I sharing this screen? Are you guys seeing my? Yes, we are. Okay. Oh, you have oh. unshared it. You stop sharing, so you need to reshare. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we can see it now. Okay, so this is a second example of present value. Okay, I thought so. Let's. We've already understood present value now, so let's move on to. Um, let's see if this one is on future value. Sam has five thousand today. I want to know the value of that sum in five years. Okay, so this one is future value. Given the current interest rate of 3%, the future value of 5,000 in five years time at 3% is what? So in this case now, we see that uh, his future value is equal to 5,000 The social value is 5,000, which is his present value, right? Mm -hmm. uh, multiplied by one plus, what is the interest rate? 3%, 0 0.03 and raised to power five. 
Okay, so we're going to have the 5,000 multiplied by in open bracket 1.03 raised to power five. So use that same distance. So 5,000 multiplied by open bracket, uh, multiplied by, let me pull up my, Calculator. Let me check this so that when I jump to a okay, so I have one point zero three three raised to power five. This x y right is to power five equal one point one five nine three. So I am going to take my 5,000, now multiply by 1.1593. So 5,000. So the future value of this 5,000 will be $5,796.50. Right? So that's see what I got here, right? Mm -hmm. So that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so that is the the this thing, the calculations on this thing. Always, always do your open your brackets and do the fraction first before you multiply by the uh, the present value. And also do your bracket first before dividing the future value by whatever your result is, okay? Now, there are various investment uh, objectives. Can you guys give me a minute? Let me get this case turned on. Okay. All right, um, talking about investment objectives, sorry about that. Please move these windows away from. Okay, share the application. That's okay. Um, investment objectives are the reasons and goals for which we are investing. Well, hey, Katie, take him, please. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, different people have different investment objectives and also different time horizon at the same time, right? For instance, small companies, uh, is it in technology, is a technology company that needs uh, to attract very specific computer programmers and mathematicians and this type of employees are in high demand in small company cities. So to make small companies attractive to potential employees, it will provide a very, very generous retirement savings. Again, this is talking about investment objectives. This one is for, as it relates to a particular company, right? Then there's another one called an account purpose. Uh, both registered and non-registered accounts are available for the purpose of savings and investment. Registered accounts are individual registered in the owner's name with the Canada Revenue Agencies. Yes, they are registered plans. And uh, the registered plans are RRSP, TFSC, uh, group registered plans. We have group registered plan and individual registered plan. Any of these registered these registered plan have um, individual's identity attached to them with the Canada Revenue Agency. Okay, 
uh, we moving on to uh, financial goals, right? Um, again, you know, investment strategies, investment, uh, 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 like we see so in the this investment objectives also comes with financial goals as well. We all invest because we have some financial goals we want to meet. The financial goal is created when an investment objective such as retirement is assigned a dollar figure such as 500,000 or thereabout. You see, my financial goal when I retire is to <laughs> have 5 million <laughs> and even more, right? So, yeah, so that's the thing. So we all have different financial goals and that kind of tends to drive, you know, what we do and how we do what we do, right? Um, my screen is looking funny. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's better now. Awesome. Okay, so uh, need for guaranteed investment and time horizon. Well, need for guaranteed investment is um, uh, is the is kind of the gold standard for those that are not risk takers, right? So there are some people that hey, they will tell you, okay, I don't want to lose my money. I don't want uh, any part of my money, anything to happen to any part of my money at all. Please move this window away from the shared application. Which one is shared application? Can you guys see my screen though? Hello? Yes, we see your screen, but it's kind of blurry, though. Yeah, and uh, I keep getting notifications saying, move these windows from shared application. Okay, let me stop sharing. Mm. Okay, I will try to reshare again. Okay. Let me... Okay, should be better now, right? Yeah, it's clearer now. Yeah. It's... <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, we're talking about financial goals and then the need for guarantee investment is available for people who are not risk takers, okay? There are some people that want security, they want certainty in everything they do. So for those ones, you know, investing in stuff that doesn't um, pose risk at all is what is good for them. And also, uh, there are also investments that guarantee all those, uh, that meet such individuals' needs that provide guarantees for their investments, right? Some profit may also be guaranteed to pay investors specific amount of money. And the investors will know any factors of timing that may apply to their investment. So like the, the, this kind of investment that needs guarantees, every card is laid on the table right from the beginning. So there are no surprises at all. There is no uh, any situation that will look like, okay, oh, market did this or market did that no everything is is clearly stated and everybody knows what they are getting into right off the bat right and also time horizon time horizon is the time in which uh invested savings are needed according to investment objectives many at times when i do investment for people as there was a time horizon so i'll say okay three to five years so i'm say five to ten years so it depends on those time horizon that will enable us to decide 
where and how long we should put the investment into a particular investment for. Okay. All right. So we still have one calculations here on facial value and stuff like that. We've done the calculations. We've talked about it. So again, you guys can lay your hands on some questions to practice. Now, tax advantaged investment. Now, returns from investments are received in the form of um, um, in the form of interest paid by uh, paid by the least risk investment are uh, taxed at the highest rate. Okay, the same as income and from working. So, foreign income, including foreign dividend, is taxed in the same manner as interest income dividend. All right, paid by the companies from the earnings to the stock owners. Not all companies pay dividends and there is no guarantee that dividends will be paid, right? Not all companies pay dividends. And even the companies that pay dividends, there is no guarantee that, hey, we're going to pay dividends. No, it's only when they um, make profit that they pay dividends, right? Mm -hmm. So that is that one. Um, Taxed as a rate, okay. So dividend paid by company, all right. Uh, paid by company from their earnings to their stock owner. Not all companies pay dividend. Okay, we've talked about that. Taxed at a rate lower than interest if they are paid as a result of owning stocks in qualified certain Canadian companies. All right, so the next one is capital gain. Capital gains are paid by all and in the riskiest investment. So it has a lower rate than interest because only half of the gain is taxable, okay? Capital gain is uh, tax is only on half of the gains, okay? Um, all right, types of investment, uh, lots of investment now. Investor protection risk of investing and all that stuff. Segregated funds is one of the, one type of investment. Um, do I need to go into details of this? Segregated funds. Uh, inception. I don't think so. If we start going into details of it, even right now, we are far behind. Okay, advantages and disadvantages of seg funds. Okay, so segregated funds, I'm going to explain to us in a simple terminology. Segregated funds is a fund that have uh, holdings in other investment. For instance, you can have segregated funds who invest in Tesla, in Amazon, you know, in Adobe, you know, in medical, something even in, <laughs> in Pfizer and all those kind of stuff. So the good thing about SEC fund is the fact that there is an Eastern diversification, access to diversified portfolio because, you know, having holdings in all those portfolios, in all those companies enable is if the fund manager to diversify their their funds, their assets under management, okay? Now, there are several advantages to SEC funds. Let me just read what the text says. It says SEC funds can be held in registered and non-registered accounts, okay? SEC funds invested, investors may face a sales fee, of course, sales fee, you know, when they invest, and these charges is paid once, okay? Um, Let's see, advantages and disadvantages of SEC funds. One of the major advantages of SEC funds is that it's creditor protected, okay? Your SEC fund is creditor protected, ability to name beneficiary, it bypass probate. These are powerful stuff, okay? Some SEC funds provide guarantees, you know, of benefits on debt and also on the maturity of the contract and uh, tax benefits when capital losses are incurred. Okay, so when you incur capital losses, 
I think there is a tax credit or something like that. And also some of the adv other advantages of self funds share with other funds investments are there are variety of funds. There's varieties. You see, I always tell people that when you are looking at self funds, think about self funds like basketball team. In basketball team, there are many A-list players playing together, getting each other's back. For instance, if Lakers is playing and um, LeBron James is not feeling up to it quite well, on that particular day, they have other players that will be like it, right? But the game of long tennis, like this Serena Williams is playing and she's not like feeling up to it. She's going to lose woefully because her success, you know, in any particular game relies heavily only on her own individual performance, right? So that's the value or that's the benefit of um, segregated funds, the fact that it has all these diversifications running through it all at the same time, okay? Um, so, however, there are some disadvantages to self funds, okay? A minimum of 10 year term to maturity to the investor contract have to be met for in terms of guarantees, right? Okay, high annual fees than other fund investment, possible age restriction to entry into a contracts and deposit. Interesting. Okay, where and how to buy safe funds? Well, safe funds is only dealt by life insurance companies, okay? Only those who are life licensed can sell segregated funds. So safe funds are sold by investment dealers, but in that case, the dealers are acting as agent for their insurance only. Okay, dokey. Uh, moving on, sec for types of sec funds. There are um, many types of sec funds. This uh, is not okay. okay. We have the first one, which is return and guarantee segregated funds. Um, the word return has two separate meanings. Return describe performances, right? So this one is talking about segregated funds with, you know, that performs and provide returns for their investors. So in that case, it is used in this way and it is stated as a percentage, right? And that percentage is measured of how value has changed, you know, up and down since the return was last reported. You know, like with um, La Capital, they put out this report on a monthly basis. On a monthly basis, we get a report that tells us how the funds that they're managing is doing, what it did like the one for last month is out now. So we can go there and see what the investment, the assets under their management have done over the course of last month. Okay. Um, we should have a return described, describes the fund in which growth is in. Of course, with those uh, return uh, statements or return information, we are able to deduce how, okay, the growth is in and how much, right? Now, Mm, there are two guarantees provided by segregated fund, maturity guarantee, and then guaranteed upon debt. Okay. Um, segregated fund provide maturity guarantee, you know, to receive a minimum of 75% of the investments, that is whatever somebody invests in the contract when the contract matures, okay? And if the market value is higher than 75%, then the investor receives the market value. And there's also debt benefit guarantees. Remember, we're talking about guarantee on segregated funds. There are two types of guarantees. There's guarantee upon maturity. And we've talked about the fact that um, set for maturity is 10 years, okay? And then maturity upon debt benefit, debt benefit guarantee. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> Maturity upon debt, okay? 
Um, now, when there's a, this, the, the segregated fund provide maturity up to 75%. However, if the market value is more than 75%, then the investor gets, you know, the market value, right? Okay. Um, let's look at this example. June invests 10,000 in her self fund contract with 75% maturity guaranteed. When the contract matches, she will receive 7,500, which is 10,000 times 75%, or the market value if it is higher than 7,500. These people are not even serious. Who goes into investment <laughs> and be calculating loss? But it's true, anyways, because anything can happen in investment, right? Mm -hmm. But what do we know that? Um, Segregated, um, segregated fund provide maturity guarantee of 75%. So if somebody, they tell you that somebody invests 10,000, what is that person going to get? The person is going to either get 7,500 or the market value, okay? The market value at that point could be 7,000, 10,000 could be 20,000. At the same time, the 10,000 could be 5,000. What they are telling us is that if his 10,000 has become 5,000, he's guaranteed to receive minimum of 7,500, which is 75% guarantee. However, if his 10,000 has become 20,000, then he gets the 20,000, okay? Risk of investing in safe funds. Okay, why the debt benefit and maturity guaranteed in safe place? Right, what are other risks that can be associated with our segregated fund? Uh, the maturity guarantee may leave non guarantee of 25% gap. So, of course, yes, it's guaranteed for 75%, but what happens to the 25%? Well, that one is gone, it's gone, right? Mm -hmm. The investment, the investor must commit to a full 10 year contract to receive the maturity guarantee. So, yes, if you sign up, then you will have to wait to the end of the term to get your maturity guarantee. Okay, um, moving on to annuities. Any questions so far? Okay, annuities, <laughs> this annuity keeps coming up. We talked a lot about it yesterday. And here we are again today. Yes, an annuity is a structure to pay a uh, regular income over a specific period of time. That's the basic distinction of annuity, right? And um, an annuity contract is set up between the insurer and the investor. So the investor named an annuitant, which is the person that receives the income payment. Annuity payments are a combination of the investor's principal and interest paid by the insurer. So the annuitant, may also be known as the annuitant grantee, who is the payee, okay? Who is there? <laughs> what are you doing? Huh? You want to type for But it's late for that. Can you go be that upset, please? Thank you. Okay, I'm coming. Go up. <laughs> oh boy okay um okay let me go through this because he has some keywords explanations that will be beneficial to us okay then the amount received by the annuitant is called the annuity payment see, i want us to see this way the annuity is just like um I set up an annuity and then it's uh it the money is being paid like every month, right? If you set up an annuity, is it's kind of income kind of arrangement whereby you get the money every month, which is your principal's plus interest. Okay. There could be term annuity or life annuity. Term annuity is the annuity that is set up for a specific period of time. 
It could be for 10 years. It could be for 20 years. And life annuity is the one that won't continue to receive the annuity until death. Okay. Um, there's also immediate annuity or different annuity. Immediate annuity is the one whereby when you set it up, you start receiving the annuity payments immediately. However, deferred annuity is one that you set it up. Your payment doesn't start immediately. You could set it up whereby your payment starts um, in five years or in 10 years, depending on how it is being structured, okay? Um, several types of annuity do not have fixed annuity types and their payments are variable. Each guarantees a minimum payment. One form of variable annuity links to the investment performances. Okay. Uh, annuity can either be fixed payments, okay, which is guaranteed and will be received for the duration of the annuity, or non fixed payments and are guaranteed at a minimum rate. So there are some fixed annuity and variable annuities. If it's fixed annuity, it means the amount that will be received is known. And uh, variable annuity is the one that the amount will be based on the, on the interest, okay? Awesome. Um, again, just like SEC funds, we have advantages and disadvantages of annuity. Uh, the primary advantage of annuity is that they are guaranteed income stream. That's correct. And um, paid for a duration of annuity contract. Yes, that's the key advantage of this is a guaranteed income stream because I can have some money. Now, let's say I win lottery and this lottery, I don't want to blow the money and run out of money and... Um, um, I go back to square one again and start all over. So if I win like 500,000, I can take the 500,000 to insurance company and say, okay, look here, I have won 500,000. But what I want is how much can you give me to set this up as a life annuity for me so that every month I'll be getting specific amounts for the rest of my life. So insurance company will do those calculations and come on with that. Okay, perhaps with my 500,000, they can promise to be giving me, let's say 10,000 every month. This is me just trade numbers out there. So don't come and ask me what rate of return. <laughs> well, so maybe I'm getting like 10 grand every month. So that means that that is an assurance that, okay, every month for the rest of my life, I will be getting $10,000, okay? So that's a good, uh, uh, that's one of the major advantages of it. This is, that's a guaranteed stream of income, all right? Um, with types of annuities, uh, either on the payout annuities that pays income, you see as a condition annuity, Payout annuities are available in three forms, in terms terms annuity, uh, joint annuity, and whatever. Okay, uh, the rate of the returns and guarantees on annuities, uh, all this. Okay, go on and ask Daddy for phone. Go and ask Daddy. <laughs> this is my kids. Okay. Uh, the annuity payment is guaranteed for the duration of the annuity unless the contract is variable, okay? I think I've talked about this, you see. There's fixed annuities and variables annuities. You know, fixed annuity is the one that is guaranteed. The amount is known. Variable one is not known. It's just determined by the uh, the market and the, and the interest rate, okay? Um, are there risk in investing in annuities? Of course, there are risk in investing in annuity. Um, as noted above, the risk, majorly, major, major risk of investing in annuity is interest rate risk, okay? And you will see this in the exam whereby they give you maybe wrong options for you to find the right answer, okay? Um, in terms of investor protection, let's see the kind of investor protection 
has noted Azuri Protection Investor through coverage. So annuity also is covered by um, Azuri Protection also. So all annuity contracts so by insurance will be protected by Azuri. Okay. Um, stocks. Now we are looking, now moving on to stocks. Okay, we've looked at um, um, annuity as another form of investing. We've looked at SEC funds. Now we are talking about stocks. Okay, stocks are also called shares or equities. Okay, we all know what stocks is all about, right? Uh, the value of stock rises, it goes up, it goes down, depending on the market value, right? And also, um, some companies may issue pay dividend to their shareholders and some may not. Now, the following types of segregated, why are we talking about segregated funds? <laughs> the following types of segregated funds include stock, equity fund, balance fund, growth fund. I don't know where that advantage and disadvantages of stocks and why must you buy stocks tax advantages the primary advantages of stock ownership is participation that is the increase in the market stock well that alone is uh, a function of this thing i tell people because people ask me all the time uh, what do you think about buying stocks i say well when you want to start buying stocks you better know what you are doing because the thing with stock is that you can lose all your money in one day, right? Uh -huh. And also, uh, and there's also a high transparency, okay? You can gain a lot, you know, doing stocks and there's high transparency, you know, in the stock market. Investing in stock, prices are available, it's there for you to see, you know, nothing is hidden and all that stuff. Then, well, what are the disadvantages of stock? Uh, the primary disadvantage of stock is, is ownership of a certain positive outcome, this uncertainty. You see the uncertainty, the unknown. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> you go wake up in the morning, you know, the price could be cruising and then boom. And, and again, stock is so sensitive. Stock react to so many, <laughs> so many things in the society, reacts to news, react to, oh my goodness. So yes, those are the things, those are the disadvantages of stock. Losses in the value of stocks are particularly uh, compensated by the capital loss or receive you know, by the investor. Again, you can easily make money and at the same time easily lose money. Okay, where and how to buy stocks? You can buy stocks from public quoted uh, stocks or even as I said, there are so many trading platforms that one can use to buy stocks, okay? Um, So the next one is burn, okay? Okay, yeah. So here, investors, that is those that invested in stocks, just like uh, those that invest in um, annuity and uh, segregated funds are protected by Azuri. Uh, those that invest in stock are protected by, oh my God. Did I? Okay, yes. Those that invest in stocks are protected by CIPF, which is Canadian Investor Protection Funds. Okay. Um, bond, can you drink? please. <laughs> okay, so moving on to bonds. Is everyone there with me? Are we tired? Hello? Yes, we are here, but I, I might have to jump off now. 
Okay, está Kenny. Hello. <laughs> the way everyone is feeling. Okay, so maybe. Okay, let me see the. Let me find a a proper place to stop. Okay, this bond. Okay, we start from bond. Okay. Um. Okay, do you guys have any question before we go tonight? I think no. No, from you, right? Okay, start Kenny. Okay, so as usual, I'll send out this video um, tomorrow. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much, everyone, and have a restful evening. Okay. All right, good night.